and welcome to TL Physics and today I am going to be doing question four from the 2017 paper one A-level paper. So question will be on this side as usual. So an engineer, so I'm going to read the question to you, an engineer, this is a lot of information by the way, an engineer wants to use a solar cell provided for a filament lamp in a road sign. An engineer first investigates the EMF and internal resistance of a solar cell under typical operating conditions. The engineer determines how the potential difference across the solar cell varies with the current and the results are shown in figure four. And figure four should be on this side of the board now. The engineer uses the graph to deduce the operating, uh, opera while operating in typical conditions, the single cell, the cell produces an EMF of 0.7 and has an internal resistance of eight ohms. Explain how the engineer uses the graph to obtain the values for the EMF and internal resistance. And this is worth two marks. Now, if you are normally given a graph, the two things or three things that are actually really important about the graph are the intercept, the gradient, and the area under the graph. Now, this is EMF, okay? So, what I know here is I have got, on one axis, on my y-axis, I have got the potential, and on my x-axis, I have got a current, and I've got a straight line, but it is a negative straight line. So, this kind of brings up going, ooh, what could this be? And they've mentioned internal resistance and EMF, which brings us to the formula in your data sheet for this, which is in electricity, which is under the EMF formula of EMF is I R plus R. And of course, if I expand that, I end up with EMF is I R plus I R. This here is the voltage. So I've got EMF is V plus I R. And if I rearrange it, I've got EMF minus IR equals V. And it's a straight line graph, so I'm going to force it to be Y equals MX plus C. So this is on my Y axis. This is on my, oopsie daisy, this is on my X axis, okay? So this means that this here is my M and this is my C, okay? So this means, the question is asked, explain how the engineer uses the graph to obtain the values of EMF. The answer is that the EMF is the intercept, or the more specific, the, the y-intercept of the graph. Okay. And internal resistance... which is represented by this little r here, this is the gradient, this is m here. Now, more importantly, it is the negative gradient. So, it is the negative of the gradient of the graph. And this negative part is actually underlined in the mark scheme. Now, what I've done here is I've explained what the EMF is found, and I've also justified my answer using this here. And there's a really good hint. Y equals MX plus C is powerful. If you've got an equation, write it underneath, and that will support you there. So for two marks, one mark, the EMF is the Y intercept of the graph, and the internal resistance is the negative of the gradient. Now, the next question here is a little bit different, so I'm going to rub this off the board here. Okay. So this question's got two circuit diagrams, and they'll be on the board here, but I am going to draw them for my own benefit so I can actually use them. So I've got a solar cell here that's attached to an object of 30... That says 30, it's a SIG thing here. And then I have another one that's attached to a parallel object here. And then another one here. Okay. And it's asking me the question. So it tells you that the resistance of this is 6 ohms. And it's asking me, so question 3.2 asks, 4.2, sorry, asks me to deduce using calculation whether the circuits are suitable for this application. And this application states that effectively that the minimum current equals 75 milliamps. 
which means if we look at this here, I can work out the minimum voltage that is required on this object here using if that's the minimum current and that is its resistance, V equals IR. So 6 times 75 milliamps is, grab this over here, so 6 times 75 times 10 to the minus 3 is 0.45 volts. So I know that my solar cells have at least got to supply the circuit with 0.45 volts. It's asking me to analyse both of these situations. So I'm going to use my graph, okay? So my graph states here <clears throat> that if I have, uh, if I look at the graph, go back to it here, if you um, look at 75 milliamps, I know that the t voltage that is emitted is 0.1 volts. So this is figure five, by the way. So this is fig five and this is fig six. So in figure five, if current is 75 milliamps, the voltage that is given out to the rest of the circuit, because remember, EMF, I'm actually, my solar cells generate 0.7 volts, which would be fantastic for this, but I've got an 8 ohm resistor in there. And it's, when I have got, not, when I've got 75 milliamps going through, which is the minimum current, the voltage, most of that 8 ohm resistor is going to take a lot of that voltage away. So that 8 ohm resistor is only going to leave 0.1 volts left to the rest of the circuit. So that isn't enough, okay? Okay, so that is not enough voltage for the circuit because I've worked out the voltage I'm going to need is 0.45. So let's have a look at figure six. So I already know that I'm going to need at least 75 milliamps coming out of here. So this one is only going to provide me with 0.1 volts. But I've got two of these things in parallel. So what's going to happen is if 75 milliamps is going to come in, the current is going to split up. So I'm going to get half of this. I'm going to get 37.5 milliamps here and 37.5 milliamps here. So I go back to my graph and I look at 37 milliamps and I get a reading of about 0.4 volts. So I know I'm going to get 0.4 volts here and 0.4 volts here because there's less current, so the resistor takes away less. But there is a trick, okay, that you've got to remember that if with Kirchhoff's law that the current will only flow through one of these paths. So an electron will only go through one of these paths, so it will go through one of these and then it will go through this, okay. So an electron coming round would pick up 0.4 volts from here and 0.1 through here. So in figure six, an electron will have 0.4 volts plus 0.1 volts, which equals 0.5 volts, which is enough because all I needed was 0.45 volts. So that there is a quite a wordy kind of question. It's four marks here. So there's one mark for working out here, the 0.45 volts. And most of the marks that you get elsewhere are for justifying your answer. So for here, the fact that I've worked out using my graph that I'm only going to get 0.1 um, volts out, this is not enough. But figure six, an electron will have 0.4 plus 0.1, which is enough. And there is uh, this idea of deduce, means you've got to make a statement which, which if it's good or bad, and figure six is the best one, okay? So let's look at the last question, 4.2. So by the way, if you ever get a calculation question that has a couple of lines at the bottom, they are expecting you to write something, okay? So let's have a look at... Um, 4.3, which is again quite a wordy electricity question. 
Solar cells convert solar energy to useful electrical energy with an efficiency of 4%. Solar cell has a e total surface area of 32 centimetres squared. Calculate the minimum intensity um, to provide the minimum current of 75 milliamps <coughs> uh, of the road sign with a resistance of 6. So I want something in watts per metres squared. And I have been told that the solar cell has a surface area, uh, so the surface area equals 32 centimetres squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have that into metres squared. So I'm going to divide it by 100 and I'm going to do that twice. So 32 divided by 100 divided by 100 again would be, whoopsie daisy, 100, divided by 100 again, uh, 3.2 times 10 to the minus 3 metres squared, just so I have that in metres squared, because that's what they want for their answers. Okay, so what's the wattage? So let's have a look how much power I actually require. So I know power is IV, or V squared over R, or I squared R. So I've got the current and the resistance, so I'm going to use that one there, okay? So let's work out the amount of power I require. So I've got 75 times 10 to the minus 3 squared times by my resistance, which is 6. So 75 times 10 to the minus 3 squared times by 6, and I get 0 0.03375, okay? So now I know how much power I need. And I now know this is 4% efficient. So this must be 4% of whatever I get. So if I divide that by 4, and I times that by 100, I know I must get at least 0 0.84375 watts. Okay? I wanted watts per meter squared. And this is how much I've got. This unit should give you a massive hint of how to do this. So I want watts per metre squared. So I'm going to take this number and I'm going to divide it by this number. So I've got 0 0.84375 over 3.2 times 10 to the minus 3. And I'm going to need at least 263.7 watts per metre squared of intensity of light to even achieve enough for this to work. So what I've done here is I've looked at the unit and I've gone, okay, let's try and get these units. That is watts. And I've been given voltages and currents, so I'm gonna look at power here. So I'm gonna be using these formula here. I've been given an area, so let's get that into meters because that's what that unit was. So you can use units to really help you gauge what you need to find. So that there, is question 4.3 and question 4 of paper 1, 2017.